Hello, welcome to AntCast by Ant Group. It's a podcast that brings you deep into conversations with global thinkers, innovators, and entrepreneurs on groundbreaking technology and how they're shaping our lives for better or for worse. I'm your host, R.T. Warfield, coming to you from London. Beijing has just hosted the 24th Winter Olympic Games, featuring a record 109 events, over 15 disciplines, and seven sports. We have seen athletes prepare for their entire lives to participate in this event. And when they reach new heights, it's not only thrilling for them, but it's thrilling for us viewers as well. What's often hidden, however, is the enormous amount of work that goes into the preparation and training of each athlete, from coaches, trainers, and nutritionists, to the engineers and researchers that put in years of work for every incremental improvement of the athlete's performance. Nowadays, technology plays a crucial role in premier athletic performance, not to mention in everyday sports as well. It's involved in everything from the design of sportswear and equipment to the design of training tools. In this episode of AntCast, we are excited to have three experts on sports technology from the Center of Measurement and Information Systems, or SEMIS for short, in Kayani, Finland. SEMIS is a joint center of academic and research institutions specializing in developing measurement and IT solutions. To discuss this topic further, we have Marco Yanti, the director of SEMIS, Ani Hakkurainen, project manager of sports technology at the University of Uvascula, and Kirsti Poskela, development team manager for Clever Simulation at the Kayani University of Applied Sciences. Welcome to our show. Uh, as our listeners may or may not know, per capita, Finland is probably one of the two top two or three countries in the world when it comes to medals won during Winter Olympics. Therefore, due to Finland's traditionally strong performance in the games, we're so glad to have the three of you here. So before we get started, could you introduce yourselves first? Let's start with Marco. Okay. Thank you. It's really great to watch our athletes and their performance in Beijing. So about me, I'm the director of Center for Measurement and Information System in Kajani, so the SEMIS Research Center. And the sports technology is one of the three key, key research areas of SEMIS. My name is Anni Hakkarainen. I work for the University of Jyväskylas, uh, Faculty of Sport and Health Sciences, and, and Vuokatti Sport Technology Unit as a project manager. So I'm working a lot with, with this kind of sports or, or well-being technology related projects here in Vuokatti. So hello everybody. I'm Kyösti Koskela, development team manager for Clever Simulation operating under Kajani University of Applied Sciences. And I am mainly concentrated on all the technical aspects of our development. Okay, great to have all three of you. This is fantastic. We really appreciate it. So this year's Winter Olympic Games uh, have brought more people's attention to winter sports. And we can see this particularly in China as Beijing just hosted China's first Winter Olympics. As researchers in this field, what would you say is the biggest charm of winter sports? And what winter sports, if any, do you engage in? From my side, the biggest charm is when you go skiing to the lake during a sunny day in March or April. It doesn't feel sport. It's like holistic relaxation. And at the same time, you can also enjoy the fantastic winter views. So basically, you forget the work and uh, it increases both mental and physical well-being. And of course, my side, I like uh, cross-country skiing, but I definitely enjoy more the downhill skiing. And uh, Wokatti has amazing slopes such as freestyle park and uh, I, I can say that my interest towards work at the sport facilities affected uh, a lot the decision when I started working for Kainu region so that's uh, um, really attracts me that they have um, amazing world-class sport facilities and a nice ski area. For my winter sport interest I would say that I like snowboarding, snowshoeing and skating and if you ask about my interest in the well, I would say it's mainly technical. Uh, creating all sort of virtual environments and using them has been always an interest and skiing is just a perfect use case for that. And 
probably in the Kainu area, I'm kind of like a heretic because I don't like skiing at all. Like I don't ski hundreds of kilometers like most people should do, but I still follow skiing, like for example, in the Olympics. So I'm big fan of the professionals, but not big fan of the actual skiing myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Arnie? Yeah, well, I think in Finland, the winter sports and skiing sports, it, it's it's in our genes, it's in our blood. We have done it in, in schools, whenever there was uh, Finnish athletes doing cross-country skiing or ski jumping competition, and it was broadcasted by from TV. All the family was watching it, including myself and, and my family, so I think it's it comes from there and it's as Marco said, it's it's the way of relaxing and, and enjoying the nature from from my my side too. So uh, would you say, Ani, uh, that you you and Marco and Kusti basically have maybe dream jobs in Finland because it's so a, much a part of the culture and people love sports, so, uh, winter sports so much? Well, maybe, maybe you could say so. Uh, from my point of view, it's it's really big interest to to be among sports and and to be able to work with sports. And and whenever Finnish athletes they they get a medal from from big games such as in and in Olympic games in in Beijing, we feel a big proud to be part of that 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 big picture so yeah in in that sense i i would say that it's it's a dream job and for the for the other two marco and kusti could you uh you know i said at the beginning that uh, in uh, uh you know if you take all the medals won in the winter olympics over the last since the, since the beginning i guess at the beginning of the last century finland is like in the top two or three per capita uh medal winners is is that do you think has something to do with the, as Ani said, it's part of the culture, so ingrained in the culture? It's basically, we, we burn, we are living like every day we touch the snow and we sense the snow. So it's a really integral part of our lives. So that's true. And uh, it must affect how we, we don't see the snow as an enemy. It, it's a friend. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's and interesting. I'm, I'm really in my dream job, and sometimes my working days they don't feel like work. It's it's like it's gr <laughs> uh, great to do nice things, cool things with your colleagues, and test nice things. <laughs> uh, when it comes to the medals, I think uh, since we are a very small nation, like every time that a Finnish people get some sort of success, we are just kind of collectively very happy about that. So I think everybody enjoys all the medals and are cheering for our athletes that way. Uh, so technology is at the center of the promotion and advancement of winter sports. And in the uh, 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics Games, technology has enabled the events to be greener and safer for the local population and the athletes. So how is the winter sports industry as a whole innovating and what are some of the key areas of development in recent years? It is great to see the winter sports industry has started to boost more and more innovation and integrating with new digital technologies such as sensors, AI, data-driven solutions and so more. And uh, we will see that more and more the smart variables are used and the sport coaches can nowadays monitor athletes almost real time and for what do they monitor like the athletes condition and the performance and but uh, of course the winter sport and the cold weather causes challenges for technology devices and for such as cameras and other devices so we are tackling a lot of challenges yeah and maybe i could continue uh for sure AI is coming coming also to be able to upgrade the level of performance in, in, in sports or, or national uh, level uh, sports. And in Finland, we have already this work going on that we, we want to collect very comprehensive data from athletes and use all, all the knowledge uh, from that to be able to perform better in, in, in the future and also 
use the knowledge also for for other athletes or other sports what was done done right to achieve better results in 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 these and these competitions so this is this is coming and we are already doing things in Finland to to achieve this and I can still a little bit add to that since Anni mentioned that we are collecting a lot of data from the athletes so in the virtual like view we can use this data to create like realistic training environments and they can use these training environments in Finland. There's no need for big traveling abroad. We just need one person to go there and get the needed data and create the environment that can be used um, in the more laboratory scenario in a way. Yeah, and maybe also one addition is this kind of high altitude training. Uh, we already have technology to do this on a sea level. And in Vokattu, we have built these kind of cabins that that have this kind of high altitude air, and and they can uh, in these these cabins the the air can be adjusted so it simulates high altitude, and also we have been um, um, using this kind of high altitude training technologies so that you can train at sea level and without going to to the actual mountain mountain places so this is one thing also that that can be can be related to have this kind of greener uh, sports that's very interesting now you mentioned uh, Ani earlier about AI using uh, data uh, what so with data you need measurement right so can you or uh, Kusti or Marco explain uh, what kinds of data points, what, what kind of data are you collecting that uh, enables you to help uh, the um, athletes train better? Well, if you think about really comprehensive monitoring of, of an athlete, there's a recovery, there's a data coming from, from trainings, uh, there are some physiological data. Um, these all are measured at the moment and and i think the 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 added value comes from that these all data they can be collected at, at the same uh platform and 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 this is something that is being done at the moment so it should be and and it will be easier also for the athletes to do this kind of monitoring you don't need to go to a laboratory you can do this uh, by yourself at home but if you think about then like this kind of s smaller things that that really can make a difference is this kind of technical analysis and this is also something that we are working with so athlete can come to a laboratory testing laboratory he or she can do this kind of uh, technical uh, tests and and we can analyze really whatever we want from from that test biomechanical variables and and we can collect that data and show it afterwards uh in in like one minute to the athlete what has been what has been um, collected and and we can do also long-term monitoring and we can we can really show what has been changed for example if if a cross-country skier has some problems with skiing technique we can do test on on may and then we can do another test on on september and we can really show side by side these two test results and and really show that that this has been improvement or there hasn't been improvement but really we can show some facts quite easily and and understandably to to an athlete or or a coach and i would also like to continue with the biathlon that's the combination of cross-country skiing and rifle shooting so it really matters how do you hold the rifle and how, and how do you pull a trigger so we can measure uh, how the athletes are performing and how the position of the athlete affects the end result so this kind of results we are doing we can simulate and it's it provides automatic analysis by using machine vision it's quite cool yeah it sounds very cool. I will, go ahead, 
Go ahead. Yeah, Hi. and I think think the key word is actually feedback, like really fast feedback after athlete is doing some kind of performance. For example, the biathlon shooting or or skiing test at the treadmill, we can be already uh, show the result or the feedback for the for the athlete. And I think the feedback in is quite good term in that sense because it really means that the athlete also can understand what has happened in that performance. That's absolutely amazing. So, uh, you know, uh, we were speaking just earlier uh, about in Finland, people love the snow. It's, you know, it's part of the culture, it's there. And, uh, you know, we know that uh, Finland's a big winter sport nation. And I would make the assumption it's because of the climate, but, you know, what other factors would you say have promoted the development of winter sports in Finland? Well, maybe I, I could start. <laughs> uh, sure, Ani. I think one one big thing is that because Finland has a really strong technology background, we have many high level technology university of Finland. And I feel that this this know how know how has led to the state that this has been utilized and applied also for sports and well being. We have, for example, Polar and Suunto which have really strong Finnish roots and, and perhaps these brands have have uh, given the encouragement for other sports or well-being technologies uh, companies to have achieved the same success. So I think this is one one big thing. And if you add to that, like Finnish people are very keen to trying out all of these new technologies. So everybody has some sort of sport monitor or tracker Mm -hmm. and they're very keen to use them outside and testing them so we have like this wonderful pool of people trying all this new testing equipment and giving us the research data and pretty much everything we need to kind of develop skiing and develop like Anni mentioned also the well-being of everyday life and what Anni and Kyrsti said about openness to technological innovation is absolutely true but we have to also uh, remember that we have plenty of space here in Finland, especially in Kainu region. Mm -hmm. It's free to go and it's from from my apartment, <laughs> there's 30 meters from uh, from my home to ski ski track. So there's absolutely no no it's free. Yeah, third, no excuse to wow. go to avoid skiing if you if the ski roads are so close. Mm. Wow, so that's amazing. I, Very I lucky. have to disagree. There's, there's always a good excuse to not <laughs> ski. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's fantastic you're very very lucky yeah and i yeah very lucky i think also the ministry of education and culture and finnish olympic committee have really done some some uh good good uh, changes so that they can really give resources for for uh, elite sports and here in Finland the mm -hmm. winter sports it's really big thing it's kind of national sports sport so this is really also bringing good results because on the decision making level they have really done some some right choices right yeah from policy choices uh, do make a difference uh, the government support that's a good point um, so from reports and analyses, we see that the performance of winter sports participants is very much dependent on the technological support from their equipment and apparel to their training practice tools. So for outsiders, it may be hard to comprehend all the technology that goes into an athlete's achievement. So could each of you use one sport uh, as an example to tell us how science and technology support athletic performance? Uh, I could start. Um, overall, in elite sports level, also the small things can make a difference. And uh, technology and innovations can help to achieve better results that we have already seen. And this can be done by comprehensive monitoring of an athlete to achieve the best uh, possible performance uh, for the upcoming big games or creating advances, for example, skiing advance in, in Beijing Olympic skiing tracks in, in the skiing, skiing treatment environment in Vuokatti. And this, this, this is already something that we have. But at the end, we really must remember that the athlete 
is the one who puts on the running shoes or, or skiing boots and goes to do training 900 hours per year. But I think the best example from Vuokatti is, is this kind of uh, uh, Ivo Niskanen and Olli Ohtonen coach uh, and, and athlete uh, uh, couple, <laughs> if you could say. Uh, Ivo Niskanen just won gold medal from Beijing uh, Olympic Games and, and his coach Olli Ohtonen, who is working for our unit but also for the for the mm -hmm. Olympic Training Center Vuokatti Ruka. And Holly has done lots of research and also his doctoral dissertation from cross-country skiing biomechanics. And, and he's really applying all the knowledge also for his coaching. And, and also this knowledge and this kind of dialogue with, with Olli and other coaches has also guided our unit and, and SEMIS to de develop this technologies or systems that can really help coaches or athletes to monitor the needed variables, for example, when making skiing technique analysis. And this kind of uh, monitoring we have, we have integrated, for example, force and acceler acceleration sensors to skiing equipment and, and data from these systems, um, we can, we can um, save save or, or load to this kind of coaching feedback system that we have developed in in Vuokatti. it's called coach tech and the coach tech system records video and and desired sensor data and and present this in in sync in sync in the web service and all the automated uh, variable calculations are based on on research so this is quite good and and the best example from from our university or semis uh, point of view that that because when we focus also on these small things that technology can help something something could be be achieved and 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 make a difference when when competing from medals in in big games and i would like to add on what andy said and i would like to highlight the role of skiing equipment testing so our skiers Ivo, Kertu, Krista and other professional skiers really need a high quality equipment and tested equipment. So science and technology really help us in knowledge-based decision making. Well, to what, to, what kind of skis, what pairs of skis we need for the specific Olympic ski routes. And uh, these we need to some kind of uh, test lab and we have a test lab for the equipment in Vuokatti and where we can test for example, how much friction is related to certain ski pairs and how the skis are behaving in different temperatures. And, uh, and if there is too much friction, we can uh, react that pair of skis and instead focus on the pairs of skis that are uh, in balance. And uh, it's great that we, we have the testing service and the professional ski teams are using that facility. Uh, I can just very briefly highlight that the, the Beijing Olympics, like we had a problem with COVID, we couldn't go there. So just providing these at least a chance to see and learn these tracks in advance mm -hmm. was probably a helpful factor for them. Right, right. While virtual Beijing Olympic tracks have given some advantages for Finnish national team cross-country skiers and biathlonists to prepare for the upcoming Olympic Games, it is clear that in, in laboratory conditions we cannot imitate the real skiing touch. But something else we have been able to simulate. Um, due to the ongoing high-altitude hypoxia research project in Vuokatti, we have had a chance to use the portable high altitude hypoxia equipment with athletes and simulate thin air while they are skiing Beijing Olympic Games competition tracks on a treadmill. So uh, you've been mentioning uh, Vokati and Vokati is uh, where th is the location of the sports technology unit at the University of Uvascula. So so tell us what does the what does the institution focus on and what technologies are applied there? Yes, so, so our work at this uh, sport technology unit, uh, we carry out sports technology masters and doctoral programs. But besides that, we have really strong uh, R&D uh, activities. 
And we are really focusing on developing uh, solutions and applications and technologies for athlete testing and, and coaching. And for example, these coach tech systems uh, that I mentioned before, but also for the skiing equipment testing, uh, sensor technology. Uh, this is something that we, we are doing with, with the skiing equipment. We integrate certain sensors that, that we, we need. And then, then also uh, we are focusing on, on using these kind of technology advanced in training environments. For example, this big uh, skiing treadmill laboratory, it's kind of a test bed for, for anything we want to test, uh, whether it's something we have developed by ourselves or company uh, has something that they want to uh, validate or, or test uh, in, in certain sports. So this is this is something really important that we are focusing on, and I could say that the biomechanical research and know-how is the field that we are mostly focused on when talking about cross-country skiing research. And we have even the artificial ski track here in the test use in Vuokati, so we can bring that ski track even to Marbella, to Spain, or or to some Caribbean island. <laughs> so, wow. And oh, wow. That's, that's interesting. Smart, smart ski track, Alu Latu project. Wow. Well, that's quite interesting because that makes me think about, uh, you know, people that live in countries that don't have any snow, but want to compete in winter sports. So you're able to create these, the, the facilities for them to do the training. Is that right? Yeah, that, that's, that's correct. And uh, it's, it's not, not a big investment. And we are now testing and collecting uh, some test data so how do professional skiers feel uh, whether it matches the re real ski ski track and we have got a really good results oh, and and the results are does it match they would say okay there's a little bit more friction um, that's de de depends on on the surface of that artificial material but it's uh, okay. we can use some specific chemicals to, to decrease the friction there. But uh, it's quite promising. And uh, even if, if you move that to some warm, warm destination, uh, as I said, Marbella or Af even Africa, so that would give uh, people the chance to try this skiing, cross country skiing. <laughs> they have ne never, oh, never seen amazing. snow, but this, this could give them uh, some new, new views. Wow, that's fascinating. About the future plans, I can say that we are aiming to take developed athlete testing solutions also to the field conditions and to enable easy and reliable data collection from real training situations. And one example how to achieve this is the ongoing development work among automated motion analysis in laboratory conditions. In this work, we are training post estimation models ourselves by using AI but also open source models have been studied since it would benefit more users and suit better to field conditions. And if we succeed in this, it would give added value for coaching purposes for any sport that require technique analysis. Can you tell me what can other winter sport cities and sites learn from the experience at Wokati in supporting both professional performance and promoting winter sports as an industry? I would say that other winter sport cities could learn from Vuokatti that there are no overnight success stories here. So winter sport training started in Vuokatti already in 1945 and it has really rich history and the University of Jyväskylä started its operations in 2004 and it, I think and that was really was a starting point for the success story of Vuokatti in terms of living sport ecosystem. So my first lessons learned is that sports tech requires university level research and top scientists for analyzing sports data and conducting simulations and experiments and of course interpreting results and leading these sport tech research projects. And, uh, of course, we need companies to introduce new services and product innovations and collaboration with schools and uh, even municipality of Sotkamo has a really important role here. So my second lesson learned is work at the, the all the sport ecosystem actors have started to work to work together towards a common goal. It really mm -hmm. it takes time to understand this, but uh, to, we need to work together towards a common mm -hmm. goal. Hmm. I 
I think I can add to that because I, I think we actually been really lucky with the different operators in the area because we have pretty much all the necessary bases covered with the companies or organizations or universities participating in this ecosystem. And for example, as at the KMK, we just expertise in virtual environments and electronic uh, design, but we pretty much at the start at least didn't know anything about skiing so when we have experts on the training and technology and research it can just create a very solid base for creating something that is can actually be used in the training of skiers yeah and i feel that semis has really really um offered a platform for this kind of multidisciplinary uh collaboration and research and this has really uh, speed up the development process because we know each other uh, under the semis umbrella and we can really do kind of fast fast um, um, developments and, and test and we can really react on those needs that comes from the coaching level. I've heard that uh, China has sent more than a thousand of its winter sports athletes to Finland for training. Uh, which actually includes the skiing site at Wokati. Obviously, it's important to have international exchanges in sports training. So uh, have you worked with these Chinese athletes, any of you? Well, the University of Yuvaskula have worked at some level because when when these teams came to uh, Wokati, the Wokati sport was the, was the main operator and, and they uh, the teams were... were uh, using all the facilities and, and uh, that Bogati Sport provides. But when they were doing this kind of athlete test and, and, and skiing technique test, uh, with those we, we were co operating with, with Chinese teams and, and this way we, we did some kind of cooperation. And also I could mention that, that the uh, cooperation with China was already done done before because the Beijing Sport University and, and our university they made this kind of cooperation contract and, and it included that the uh, staff from the Beijing uh, Sport University comes to Finland and they stay in, in Jyväskylä and in Vuokatti to train these kind of winter sports athlete testing and, and research issues. So this way the, the China collaboration has been uh, like broader than just these kind of uh, Chinese athletes coming to Wokatti. And we would like to welcome the new teams from, from any country to here. Because we have amazing fast training facilities, not only for the uh, for cross country skiing or, or biathlon, but also for ice hockey and other other um, arts of sports. So please welcome and come and visit to see work at. We've been hearing a lot in the new every year. Actually, we hear more and more about virtual reality and virtual reality headsets and how the technology keeps evolving and getting uh, better and better. So um, I know that uh, you do something with VR skiing uh, simulations. So can you tell me how does it work and have there been any major breakthroughs in this technology? Okay, this might be slightly technical, so, so interrupt me if I get sure. too much in detail. So uh, like, Pretty much when we start creating these like virtual arenas, we have to start with 3D models. And there's been a lot of uh, advancements on how to use this kind of data available on creating these model tests, like data on the landscapes or data, uh, road data, or this LIDAR data, or pretty much a lot of different source materials. And we are actually utilizing the game engines the same that you are using to make uh, commercial games to make these environments but but the main problem we have is that all of these key arenas are all over the world so we can't really uh know what what's the amount of data we can get like what's the level of detail like what kind of data is available so we started working kind of like these uh 
minimum amount of data we need to cr uh, have to create these kind of like realistic enough skiing arenas for the training. So we decided that when we actually have one person on the field uh, using this accurate GPS data, we can actually just use that data to generate all of these virtual environments that we need for the trainer. So pretty much we use the GPS data and create the skiing track. Then we generate the surrounding terrain, add the trees that we want. Like if we are in Norwegian countries, we might add pine trees and like the southern European skiing tracks or Alps have a little bit different food and different terrain. So we can select all of these environments and then uh, we can just add all the different uh, elements that are needed, like for example, stadium elements or other skiing elements. And we used to do, for example, for the paging tech work we created, we did this totally manually in a way. We had a 3D artist creating all of these environments, but now we started working on the more automatic version. So in a sense, once we have the GPS data, we have a solution that we can in minutes create this track presentation automatically that can for the training purposes then be integrated to the treadmill. So once you have the track, you can actually ski it in the virtual environment. So you automatically have the view, you automatically have the curvature of the <coughs> land, you have uh, the data needed to control the treadmill. So um, pretty much uh, trying to provide the athletes a very automatic way to generate this virtual environment that they can use for their training. This is also something that we can use this kind of environment to really have this kind of like mental uh, training also when the athlete athletes okay. know that there's this kind of uh, uh, um, inclination on, on a track and, and how would you adjust your skiing speed in this and this uphill. So it's kind of you okay. can you can also train like physiologically, but also it's it's something that you can use also to prepare mentally for these games. You can perhaps make a uh, race uh, tactic also. Right. So that's something I never thought of. That's interesting. And also the if we would integrate these models for like every every one of us could actually go through the Olympic roads, for example, if we go to fitness center, we would we could take a ba Beijing <laughs> ski track there. <laughs> it, it's 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 possible. So we could engage the normal normal skiers uh, to 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 uh, see what what kind of road we have in Olympics. Oh, that's very interesting. Wow. And we we are mainly using this for skiing now, but like yeah. the with the system is also we're kind of piloting also how, how it would be for like running or biking or the it has m multiple functionalities. It's not just for skiing, like we also mentioned earlier. We try right. to apply this in many fields as possible. So right. So there are a lot of applications. Yes. Uh, have you have Kirsty? Have you tried it yourself? Have you? Put your, put your, use, use the virtual reality and yourself? Have you tried it? Yes, we, we do a lot of work in the virtual reality, so it's it's kind of normal for us. I haven't tried the treadmill combination yet. It's mainly meant for professional athletes, probably mm -hmm. also because I kind of suck at skiing, so it might be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just a simulation, so you're not going to get hurt. <laughs> yes, but if you're actually in the treadmill and there's a big oh, slope I see. coming up. So, right, so I got you. That, okay. that actually a really big physical achievement to get up the hills there. So I see. I got you. Yeah, I got to take care of your heart, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so what are uh, some of the advantages of using skiing simulation or other athletic simulation, as you were mentioning, uh, in comparison to real world practicing? And uh, how are any of these being used uh, currently besides the skiing? The good thing about virtual environment and you can you are pretty much in control of everything. You can just have the weather you want. There mm -hmm. can be as much traffic on the track as you want. And it's also about repeatability in a way that you can just repeat the same 
training session the same way as many times as you need. And when we're talking about the research side, when you are working in the field, you can't have that much research equipment like um, measuring your oxygen intake and like equipment like that. But once you're in the lab, you can use that. You can use motion capture cameras and all the other facts. So on the research side, being able to re uh, ski in a kind of real like situation and perform the measurement, it's also very big advantage. If we think about these green values, so and if we can just use the GPS data to create this kind of virtual environments or, or arenas and bring them to this uh, testing laboratories, it's it's a really big advantage and, and money saving issue also. And, and this way we can like quite uh, cost efficiently make make a new kind of training and, and preparation possibilities for the athletes to prepare for the upcoming uh, world championships or, or Olympic games. And this is really the, the biggest point or reason why we have been doing this, this in Wokati. Of course, there are really uh, big, big uh, variety of, of other sports that can, can utilize this, this know-how and, and, and technology. But in Wokati, it's really to prefer, prepare for the big uh, races and to be like mentally already at the at the competition uh, venue. And also the tr transportability of the so you can basically move that skiing simulation lab to anywhere in the world. Even even the yeah, that's a big yeah. advantage. That's a big advantage. Like think of all the travel logistics that you have to have for move the whole team. Like literally you can have one guy walk through the track, send the file to Finland or whatever the lab is, and everybody can be practicing it on a treadmill and 30 minutes after the GPS measurements were done. So it's just very robust and fast way to use this technology. Right. So do, do any of the three of you think that simulation could be completely uh, replace real world practicing or do you think it needs to be a combination of the two combination of two definitely so we can't uh, get rid of the real <laughs> real ski ski routes and the real real skiing facilities so how much time would you would an athlete generally uh, in, that you work with the athletes you work with what percentage of the time are they spending in the the simulated uh, training versus the real world these athletes that come come really often to walk at the uh, to train and and have have uh, themselves tested in in this kind of testing laboratories when when preparing for the Olympic games on a training seasons I would say it's maybe once in a week maybe two hours training session and but it's really depending on 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 their like training plan and and what what they are mm -hmm. like focusing on on their trainings but we have had the finnish uh national sp sprint uh, skiers and 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 also uh for this kind of long distance uh cross-country skiers they have really used the Beijing simulator in in Vogatian and they have really got familiar with the Beijing routes uh, in a, uh, beforehand. So I uh, I love the snow. I love the w uh, winter places, and I think it's beautiful. Uh, however, when I was a teenager. I broke my leg skiing, and I have not <laughs> have not gone skiing ever since because the the rehabilitation was so awful. So I've never gone skiing again. So, but I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying in my case, that's what happened to me. So, I know uh, we got some data recently uh, from Ant Insurance, which is an insurance agency platform that's on our Alipay app. And sales of accident insurance, including uh, the skiing insurance on the platform, has increased by 20% month of month between January, February, 2022. So it's indicating to us that probably more people are participating in winter sports, uh, but they're also concerned about their safety in winter sports and other high risk sports. So as a last question to all three of you, could you perhaps share some tips for beginners on how to properly protect oneself when participating in winter sports? 
and, and even for me, if I want to, you want to convince me to go back. Yeah, I can, I can start. And uh, so definitely uh, learn how to fall there. So that's the one, <laughs> one, one of my first <laughs> tips and uh, try to be like a flexible with your legs. So if you if if okay. you are standing there in the straight, so it's it's gonna be it's gonna end to a disaster. So you need to be flexible and <laughs> in the knees. That that's my tip. That's good advice. Mm. That's a good tip. Yes, the good. How about from Kusti? You have any uh, tips for I, beginners? I, I think that like. I would say I, I've got my injuries mostly in snowboarding, a few broken bones. So I would say that in pretty much in general, in every winter sport, the key point is to know your own skill level, because okay. if you <laughs> try to do anything too complicated, that too dangerous, it's very easy to get hurt. So know what you can do and be actually uh, believe that level in a way that you don't try to do everything too fast just be reasonable in that sense that kind of applies for everything skating skiing downhill skiing or anything and ani any advice yeah i think those those tips were really good uh that marco and kirsty said but maybe if if there's a coach available that could kind of give some sessions on on how to start I, I could I could uh -huh. really use the professional help to uh, help to to uh, learn the right techniques and and of course to how to fall uh, right <laughs> so that you don't hurt yourself. That's that's really good point actually. I wish I had spoken to the three of you before that, <laughs> that happened to me when I was a teenager. Unfortunately, I didn't take any of that, that advice and I did it wrong. But uh, anyway, going forward, and maybe the listeners will take your advice before they hit the slopes. So anyway, that was a fantastic. Fa we could have gone on forever because there's so much we could have uh, dug in there, but uh, we only have so much time. And I really appreciate the three of you. That was Marco Yanti, the director of SEMIS. Ani Hakkarainen, project manager of sports technology at the University of Uvascula, and Kirsti Koskela, development team manager for Clever Simulation at the Kayani University of Applied Sciences. Thank you very much. Thank you for really nice interview. Thank, thank, you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Antcast on technology and winter sports. Ant Group has always been interested in sports, and we have been supporting many sports ventures, including an eight-year partnership with UEFA and our sponsorship of China's women's football. We like to welcome different people from different fields to offer their stories and perspectives, as well as how their fields are influencing our lives. That's it for this episode of Antcast. To make sure not to miss a single episode, please subscribe on iTunes or Spotify. I'm Artsy Warfield, coming to you from London. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.